Hey, I'm Pops. Happy Thursday to all of you. Yes, Throwback Thursday is here again. Yes, it is May 4th. Yes, I did a Star Wars film. Revenge of the Sith. It's a film I just hadn't watched in a while. I hadn't watched the prequels in a while. I hadn't watched any Star Wars uh, in a minute other than just doing the reviews and stuff that you guys have seen me reacting to. And hence the reason I'm down this rabbit hole with my Star Wars Day plans on May 25th. Make sure you check the description. There'll be a playlist link there so you can get a catch uh, catch up to all the little links and things we're going to do live streams in the morning, in the evening, kind of some videos throughout the day. We're going to do some different things to kind of really celebrate where Star Wars began and what I think really needs to be us planting our flag of, of cherishing the franchise and the IP that we have uh, grown to love and grew up with. So the thing, the thing I think really struck me the most was that um, it's been 20, almost 20 years. And uh, I, remember also my feeling of going to the theater and just having so much apprehension. The prequels were not universally well received. They were fine. Uh, they have definitely have aged well. And I definitely understand fans that didn't grow up during the original trilogy and how much they love the prequels. Uh, I watched it again and I had a very similar reaction that I did when I saw it that very first time I came out of the theater with my, when we had, we had some kids and uh, my closest friend, and uh, I felt, well, they did it. He pulled it off, meaning he made me believe that was the origin of Darth Vader. He made me believe that this is kind of how it started. Uh, are there a lot of issues and things like that? Sure. Can we nitpick even further and deeper? Of course, that's what fans do. But at the end of the day, Revenge of the Sith delivered enough to make me happy as a fan. So the film obviously is is the final act of this trilogy and, and the fall of Anakin and the rise of him as uh, Darth Vader. And the love and the interest with Padme had become a very tedious thing that was very, it was awkward in Phantom Menace because of the age difference. And then it was like really strangely inserted. Uh, the CGI scene was terrible uh, in Attack of the Clones. And then things just kind of jump and race forward where they're having this, you know, marriage and now intimate relationship. And yet none of the Jedi's can figure that out. I thought that was always kind of strange that no one could sense all of this. No one could sense him having emotions and feelings and thoughts, particularly Obi-Wan, like you're around this guy all the time. So while we could hang our hat on, you know, some of that, at the end of the day, you can go along for the ride that this has all transpired. And he's having these nightmares about losing her during uh, childbirth. And he's obsessed with this thought that Palpatine has kind of watered that seed of saying, listen, no, there was this mentor. This that, Well, he, did, he doesn't admit to being a mentor at first. Uh, there was this Sith Lord that knew how to prevent death. He was obsessed with it. And there's so much more to the Force than what the Jedi are teaching you. And Palpatine... All of that early phase was really, really good, and I really liked it. I, I really enjoyed, uh, obviously, the final battle sequence with Obi-Wan and Anakin. I, I thought it's just freaking fantastic. And I have to admit, I didn't really have an emotional reaction to um, the death of Count Dooku. Um, I, I was kind of sad because, obviously, with some of the, the EU stuff, you get a little more of the lore there, and, and you have some of that. Um, and I didn't really uh, have any real major <clears throat> reaction to um, a lot of the other action sequences involving the clones and things like that. I just, it's all, it's, it's all, it was all fine for me. I really love the lava showdown where they're, you know, jumping around and it just really, really love that scene. I just thought it was, it was, it was a great way to get us to where we needed to go. I also can say how much I really, am not critical of Yoda fighting um, Palpatine, Darth Sidious. I will say I'm critical of Yoda and not, Yoda doesn't get blame for some really horrible advice in this movie. <laughs> Look, Yoda has this, this advice about, you know, don't love someone, don't care about someone because it leads to an attachment and the attachment can basically lead to suffering. But Yoda just be concerned about that person. And yet there's a scene not long after that where it's like, search your feelings. And I'm like, okay, hold on. The Jedi in this movie are creating some contradictions 
in, if you're a very powerful and emotional individual in the middle of like human development, it's a very strange dichotomy that's sort of like in there that you're expecting for people to navigate and then not fall into the dark side, not fall into kind of a b- emotional blackmail. And that's kind of where we end up finding it. And again, he ends up in this emotional blackmail of loving and caring about someone while his mentor and the other Jedi are like, no, 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 you shouldn't have feelings and you shouldn't be attached to someone. Yeah. You were attached to your mom. You were too old, which was always a weird thing because it's like, okay, so you're just taking children from their mother, but you were not expect, you were expecting them to just abandon all of their emotions for that. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a, there's a big gap there, a big C of that versus control over your emotions. For instance, having anger, is a normal reaction to something like it's normal to get angry. It's normal to get angry. If someone cuts you off in traffic, it's normal to get angry if someone betrays you, but how you react to that, how the, how, you know, can anger become wrath? That's, and this is, this is the theological part, the spiritual part, right? This is the, the, you know, the Bible talks about, don't let your anger become wrath, you know, control your tongue, control how you act in, in response. And, it kind of got muddled a little bit more than I would have liked to have seen. I think that it it's there, but it kind of got a little muddled. Uh, oh, I like that. Uh, my biggest complaint with the film, before I get to the technical stuff, I definitely want to show you some of the stuff in the footage from the trailer, because I wanted to give you a little bit of the perspective, too, of what our thoughts were as we were headed into this movie, and then kind of how it delivered or not delivered for us. But the biggest thing for me was once... Darth Sidious, once Palpatine is confronted by the Jedis, Mace Windu and the others, that was possibly, first off, Darth Sidious becomes like this. He makes these weird visceral sounds and almost snarls and stuff. And he becomes like a super gymnast fighter. I just didn't care for any of that. And he just cuts these Jedis down like butter. I know what they're going for. I know we're trying to say that Darth Sidious is that powerful and that strong. I really, really wish they'd been able to uh, execute that scene in a better way to show some conflict in, 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 and, not be, and not for action purposes. One, a tribute to the fact that the Jedi were actually strong because you, you almost kind of make them almost seem, it's almost like silly, like it was so overrated. And if, he, and if it was that overrated, then what does he need a freaking apprentice for to move forward let's just start cutting them down just do it in discreet ways and control the video surveillance and set traps and just just create enough chaos yeah i don't know it was just it was so, it was so it's so extreme that it's something that i don't i don't i don't care for as much and the back and forth with mace windu was very strange as well because you feel like and can just the way he responds and, and how it all plays out and and stuff and just being so easily duped in that sequence to me, which is very, very strange. And then even after it's over and you see Palpatine finishes off Mace Windu, then he just kneels and does it anyway. He's like, well, I know you like, I know you love Padme, but maybe <laughs> you're siding with, you're not siding with the devil you don't know. Now you're siding with the devil you do know and you saw what is done. And then to move further into that, I, the rage is so consuming, the anger and all this fear and stuff is like, I, I'm willing to execute young children and all of that. Uh, that descent and stuff is just, it's very, very powerful and tragic. Um, but I can say rewatching it, it was, a, it, it felt a lot clunkier than it's felt before. Like it didn't feel, um, you know, forget about Star Wars for a minute, step back and just like as a general story arc. It wasn't as smooth as I, I, I've always given the film a pass because I understand it rather than just being as objectively evaluating it. And it definitely felt a lot clunkier. The ending saves a lot of that because the ending with Padme showing up and how he reacts and all that, that all works really well. And it does kind of save it all for the most part. Uh, the biggest criticism with the film, obviously, is, you know, he was using some CGI techniques and trying to do things that were just kind of out of where we were, right? Avatar had already moved forward with like motion capture and some stuff that Lucas really wasn't doing. He was still doing, you know, traditional CGI computer work that Lucasfilm was doing. And you certainly can tell. There are scenes that he was, he was trying to be very aggressive. The one sequence that I really wanted to try to show would be 
you know, Obi-Wan riding that lizard thing. I forget what it's called. Yeah, that was that was probably some of the worst parts. Um, let me go to the trailer for a second. Because I definitely want to try to give you, um, you know, because I don't think there really too much to go on that we, we. Is some consider to be unnatural. So it was really good to see they didn't waste any time in our promotional material to let us understand that it's their relationship of how, how Palpatine is going to kind of keep pulling him in and, and lure him, put him on a hook, right? So we got a lot of that. And then you have sort of like the conflict with the two of them, with Obi-Wan and... We are at war, Anakin. And it's, it's put juxtaposed and, and done very well with the footage from the clone battles and things like that. And then, of course, you have this whole thing with the council. Now, I will admit, Anakin's response of, you know, you're on the council, but you're not a master, and the Jedi is basically provoking him and all of that. Um, I didn't feel like that aged particularly well either. Um, anyway, all that was fine. Um, but I remember this as well with this part, um, the this, this sequence, right? Because you've come out of Attack of Clones and the romance stuff is obviously the worst part. I can't even tell you the last time I've sat through Attack of the Clones like 100% and not skipped over pieces of that romantic sequence um, and the marriage and all that in Attack of the Clones and just kind of keep it moving. When the trailer dropped, I remember having this and I just kept thinking to myself, man, he just hasn't done any of that part right. I mean, I get that they like each other. To achieve a power greater than any Jedi. Yeah. So wait, let me finish my thought on that other the part there, though. It's just, I just, I just remember that was my apprehension. There was just so much apprehension about whether or not that could be done well or not. And it is okay. In this movie, it's significantly better. And I get his attachment. I think that just when the in the framework of some of the other stuff, it, it didn't quite flow as well as you thought. This was the scene that gets you most excited, right? Because now you have the Jedi showing up, the Jedi Master showing up to face him. And you know it's going to end crazy. Um, and they didn't really spoil too much, I don't think. I think that's the first time we see a purple lightsaber, if I remember correctly. Let me get the scene. Bring me, Master Jedi. See, he has a purple Jedi, a purple lightsaber. So that's the first time we have a purple lightsaber. I know that stuff sounds silly to you guys, because if you've grown up later and you've always had all these multiple colors, what's a big deal to you? But what's it was? I love the purple lightsabers. I guess we have purple lightsabers in Attack of the Clones, because he used it in Attack of the Clones. But you know the throwdown's coming. And you see Yoda and... Again, some of the stuff looked a little rough, but we really were into the, this sequence where you see him leading clones and you know it's turned bad and the feelings and, and all that was done well. So I, I have to admit, it was one of those things where you felt like they're going to be able to deliver and then we get the scene. We get the tease of what's coming and we know it's coming and then... um yeah, it was it was it was interesting to see that they could deliver. I I I it it's 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 one of those things where I felt like it's not often <laughs> that they deliver. Um, to be perfectly honest, so let me switch this back here for you. Um, so this is that that the sequence these this thing that Obi Wan is riding on. Some of these are fine, and some of these are just brutally irritable. Uh, just like takes you out, takes me out of the movie, kind of watching. Especially, he was trying to be so aggressive with this; like it was just so badly CGI'd in here. And I'm not saying it's see like it, they cut away to him on something to 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 have a green screen cutaway, but the shot right before that, it's just not good. Um. I didn't really mention General Grievous, and I have to admit, I love General Grievous. I think General Grievous is possibly one of the more underutilized elements in the prequels. I wish there had been more of that. It was likely some of the, my my kids, my boys loved General Grievous stuff, the multiple lightsabers, all that kind of stuff. So that was some of the best stuff. Um, it was fun to rewatch. Um, it still lands at about a seven and i'm probably being too kind it's more like a like a strong 
you know, I don't even know how I get into decimal points. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's like a, it's, it definitely is a three and a half star movie. I don't know if it's a four. It's like right there. It's like between like that three and a half and four. I don't really think I feel comfortable comparing it to other four star movies. Four star movies are great movies. I don't think this is quite there. It's like kind of a three and a half star movie. And even then at three and a half, there are a lot of little elements to it that aren't quite as good. And this is by far the best of the three films of the prequels. So you're looking at, you know, what would Attack of the Clones be? What would, what would Phantom Menace be? And when you compare that to the original trilogy films. So for me, especially as a rewatch and as time has gone on and how rewatchability it is, I haven't watched this again. So it's not like I'm out there thirsty to uh, sit in front of the TV and uh, throw up a wrench and sit back on because that's not been the case. So I'm kind of, I'd be a hypocrite if I try to sell you on that because that is not the case. I've not watched the prequel movies very often. The stuff that I have watched with the, with it has been with my uh, grandkids and they were, they really want to watch uh, pod racing sequences, the Darth Maul fight scene, you know, attack of the clones fight scene, this lightsaber stuff and stuff that they would want to watch, which they haven't watched as far as I know, I haven't, I haven't let to watch any is because it's much darker and edgier for them. And they are a little on the younger side with that. And at least this did push that envelope, which I think is what the best part of it is compared to some other stuff where even in, uh, Empire Strikes Back and Jedi, even though it is very dark, it doesn't feel, I don't want to say disturbing. There's something there that doesn't cut into you in the same way. It's just different. And uh, yeah, anyway, so that's my thoughts on it. Um, again, we are having Star Wars Day, May 25th, uh, really paying tribute to what we love, what we enjoy, what we still love and enjoy doing finding and talking with folks, hopefully like yourselves, and you can join us and maybe there'll be opportunities on some different streams that we're doing during the course of the day. And maybe if you're watching this and you have your own channel, put some stuff up, do your own thing on May 25th. Don't let May the 4th just be about a bunch of gimmicks and shirts and sales and things like that. Let it be a true tribute to Star Wars and how it began and how much we love it. That's my take on all of it. Thank you so much for watching. I am Pops.